Welcome back to Miller's in Motion. This week, we are wrapping up our time here in Elkhart, Indiana with Alliance. Had an absolute blast while we were here. It was a work trip, but we got to go visit our friends at Moride and shoot some stuff over there. We also got to visit with our friends at Alliance, which is always great to see them just because we enjoy hanging out with them. But in addition to that, we got a little TLC done to the coach. I am packing up the hotel room now, and I'm about to head back to the factory because the coach is actually done earlier than I thought it would be. So uh, I am going to pick it up without you guys just because I want to focus and make sure the handful of things we got done are done correctly and to where we want them and that I understand what was done. Uh, but we will pick you guys up because we need to get back as safely but as quickly as possible to Texas because it is the Friday before Easter and I really would like to be home for Easter with Lauren. When I say home, I know our home goes with us, but North Texas is always our home. So let's head towards the factory and get all this stuff loaded up and go. hooked up and about ready to go. Alliance was nice enough to let me fill some fresh water so I don't have to stop anywhere and do that. But with that, a huge thank as always to the team at Alliance RV. Got to have some fun with Joe, Jeremiah, C. Ab, the rest of the team, Cully, Ryan, Bill. It's always fun to come up here. Uh, if you do get a chance to come up here, uh, come say hi to these guys. They're the nicest people in the world and they will answer any questions that you may or may not even think you had, they'll answer. Uh, with that being said, we are going to hit the road now. So we have a little over a thousand miles that we got to go and hopefully be there tomorrow. So the great part is they were able to knock us out a little bit early today so I can get on the road. So I'm filling up our fresh water tank a little bit here and then we are going to be on the road. Let's go. Now that we are on the road, let's chat a little bit about why we were up in Elkhart. Well, the original reason why we were up in Elkhart was because we had a couple of reasonably big issues with our coach. And I say reasonably big, they weren't like massive, like can't move, frame flex slash failure kind of stuff. They were just annoying. So our GFCI line one had gone completely dark when we were down in Florida at RV Unplugged uh, production. So that was a touch annoying. Um, we lost all the power to our outlets in our bedroom. Everything 12 volts still worked. We did have one outlet that still worked, which was nice, but we had to get that fixed. And then two, if you remember, uh, one of the videos that we did while we were headed down to Florida uh, in Mississippi, we took a lug nut bolt thing uh, to the front cap. So and there ended up being so many stress fractures uh, in the fiberglass of the front cap that it made more sense for it to be replaced. So those are the two big things. While we were there, we did have a couple of superficial things on a list. And again, little trim pieces that had just come loose that were kept having a hard time reconnecting. Um, we wanted to reinforce where the fridge was sitting. Again, nothing that was like massively a big deal, but just enough that while it was there, we went ahead and got a few things done. So. That's why we were there. So we're a little further down the road and I am going to take my first stop of the trip. Just a quick rest stop because my bladder is officially losing. All 
Also, now that we're here at the rest stop, <clears throat> you'll notice uh, in one of the clips right before this, there was an RV that like flew past me. So we typically max out at about 65 miles an hour. Anything more than that, we start to notice a little bit of damage inside the RV, not to the RV, just it, 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 there's a certain line for some reason, at least with all the RVs that we've ever owned, that you should kind of try and stay around 65. To be honest, I'm, I'm yes, I want to get where I'm going quickly, especially today, but not at the expense of damaging anything. So it's always kind of one of those things for me that we typically top out at 65. Now there's going to be moments when you try to goose it around like a semi or something else is going on. That's fine. It, that's kind of an is what it is situation. Um, and, and a little bit different. What I'm talking about is just my normal drive time. It's right at about 65 miles an hour. And it is what it is. That's just part of what I'm going to do for that drive. So uh, just my little two cents. I'm gonna go use the restroom real quick and we're gonna get back on the road. whale we are literally at a standstill on the highway now and I'm, I'm i'm not even out of the uh i'm not a, out of the on-ramp back onto the highway from the rest area this doesn't help not gonna lie um an accident must have just happened because we're literally at a complete and dead standstill so that kind of sucks um I mean, it's one of those is what it is situations. Not a lot you can do about it. So hopefully we just go soon. Many hours later. I went six feet. And only because people were bailing off onto the right. And so we kind of got to shimmy up. But when you're 62 and a half, 63 and a half feet long, you're not bailing anywhere. So we're just stuck here till something happens. We have seen some emergency vehicles fly by, but and, and based on where it's red on my map, uh, I can actually see it. It's just up here around the corner. Um, and then it turns to yellow and then clear again. Um, Garmin has that little traffic feature if your phone's connected to it, uh, the Garmin RV895. But yeah, I mean, you know, you think about stuff like this, and I just stopped at the rest stop. Literally, that's 100 yards that way um, behind me. And if I had not stopped, would I be in an accident right now? Or would I be in front of the accident right now? I'm going to go with that. That's God preventing me from being in an accident, and I'm perfectly fine sitting here. So sometimes not looking at everything as some massive stress out that you have no control over whatsoever. You know, there's a reason why I stopped back there and I had to go to the bathroom and maybe whatever happened up in front of us would have been completely unavoidable, unavoidable for me with the RV. And so I look at it as it is what it is. There's somebody up there that's having an emergency more than likely. And we're going to just sit here and be patient while first responders and everybody do their thing. So just remember, if you come up on a traffic jam, yes, it's frustrating. Yes, it's annoying. But there's probably a decent reason for it, whether it be construction and keeping workers safe or an actual emergency. And so, you know, don't just chill. It's fine. I mean, listen, what's the worst thing that happens? You miss a TV show? I don't know. I mean, yeah, I want to get where I'm going, but not at the expense of safety and anybody else's safety at that. So I'll let you know when we move, if we move. Well, we've been here for about 25 minutes now um, at a reasonable standstill. I mean, six feet, but I'm going to call that standstill. And we're back off so that ended up being about a 45 minute long delay and it was it was a very bad accident as you may have seen um, that resulted in in grass fire in addition to it so hopefully everybody was okay there were a few ambulances there um, yeah I mean unfortunately it is what it is it sucks to see that kind of stuff so you just have to be safe and be patient I, it's all you can do for it so but we're back on the road now and it's about time for our first fuel stop already, believe it or not. So we got that coming up here in maybe about 40 or 50 miles. So let's head on down the road.
Well, we have landed at Cracker Barrel, Chalker, in Sullivan, Missouri. Actually made it quite a bit further than I was hoping to, which is a great thing. But I will tell you, I am exhausted. Do us a favor, if you do stop at Cracker Barrels or any other business, spend some money at that business. I'm gonna order some dinner online, bring it back into the rig. I still have my bags that I'm gonna throw in there. Yeah, I, I, I have a few things to do. I need to shoot something uh, for a different video. And then I need to edit and attempt to upload our video that you guys will see Saturday. That's actually the Florida to Waco video. So anyway, with that all being said, I will see you right here in this spot bright and early tomorrow morning where we continue our crazy drive and hopefully make it all the way back to North Texas tomorrow. Good night. As promised, standing in the exact same spot. This time it's about 5.45 in the morning. I am ready to get home. So here we are. We are about to pull out of the Cracker Barrel again. It's about 5.45, probably about 6 by the time I get on. I still got to fire up the GPS, do a few things inside the truck. But hopefully we'll be pulling in this late afternoon, early evening to Fort Worth, Texas and Lauren and the pups. And that makes me smile and that makes me happy. So I'm still half asleep. My coffee's sitting in there ready to go. So let's get back on the road. All right, well, we had to make our first stop this morning. Pretty quick, only about 30 minutes on the road and then needed some fuel. Typically, I try to get fuel the night before we stop so I can kind of get on the road and just go. And there just wasn't what, and there just wasn't one early on in the day um, for right before we stopped at Crack Barrel last night. So uh, this works out. I need a little bit of breakfast and some more coffee too. So there's a McDonald's here. So grab a little coffee, put this away. And now, back on the road. So just a quick little stop. We are just coming up on the Oklahoma border, so we're making really, really great time actually. Uh, but I will say, if you do travel quite a bit and you go longer hauls like we do, <laughs> have a bad habit of doing, whether that's good or bad, um, you're gonna encounter different kinds of rest stops. This one happens to be not a full-on rest stop. So there's no actual restrooms. It's more of like an overnight truck parking. Um, I don't know that I'd ever park here overnight for like a Cracker Barrel stay or anything along those lines simply because I don't want to take any truck spots away from the professional drivers. But for a quick, need to use the restroom, all that good stuff. It's also a big reason why because there's no physical restrooms here or facilities here. We always carry a little bit of water on. Sometimes not that much, um, but enough to get what we need to get done. I put about 15 gallons on. Um, of usable water because I want to take a shower last night kind of along those lines when Lauren's on we might put a little extra other than that it's just being able to use the toilet and little things like that so kind of things you think about when boondocking but temporary so all right we need to button back up get on the road we're actually making really good time this morning we've been on for about three and a half four hours but today is a longer drive day it is about a 10 hours total um, still nowhere near as bad as my first drive day going up which was like 13 and a half uh, we made good progress yesterday but Still quite a bit, so back on the road.
And just like that, we are back in North Texas. Now, Lauren hasn't quite gotten here yet. She is on her way, though, so we're going to have some dinner, spend some time together. Thank you so much for joining us on this crazy travel day back, but I do want to tell you some stats real quick. So we left yesterday at about 2 o'clock, give or take. It is right now the following day at about 5.30, and I am actually done in about three-fourths of the way hooked up. Not completely. I still got to put everything together inside. Normally, Lauren's job today it's mine, but... You know, not bad, and we stopped at a Cracker Barrel overnight. So, about 16 and a half, 17 hours of drive time. Obviously, stopped for fuel and lunches and dinners and breakfasts and those types of things. So, yeah, it's it's um, at the end of the day, I don't mind doing it when it's just me, but I'd rather slow down a little bit when it's both of us. So, hopefully, found some entertainment in our misery, and by ours, I mean mine. <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Bye, mom. Thank you.